Hi, my name is Michelle Alba. Worthiness, that's what I wanna talk about today. Has that been a struggle in your life? Because I know for me, it has been, and I didn't even know that that was what I was struggling with. Like, are you even aware of that? I, I, um, I feel like I studied a lot of different ways of healing and working on myself with my mind, cognitively. But still in my body, I wasn't feeling worthy. Because from what I've learned in the past is that we hold our beliefs, our mindset is basically our whole body. And we hold traumas in our body tissues. And if I felt unworthy as a child because my father left when I was 12, that's gonna have an impact in my physiology, in my past, my present and my future, it's all going to be affected. And unworthiness for me has shown up as pushing love away. Pushing beautiful people that love me, that want to love me away. And I wonder, have you ever done that? Have you ever met somebody that you love and that you think is amazing and then you sabotage the relationship because you don't feel worthy to receive that? There's something that I learned about reaching our upper limit of love, and I definitely did that. I sabotaged my own relationship with someone that I had met. But let me tell you, I got pretty ugly, and I did some things that hurt that person a lot. And I actually hurt myself a lot because I didn't feel worthy of not hurting myself. And looking back on it, I've done so much, so much psychotherapy, so much healing around this topic and the things that have really helped me the most is for me to learn these quantum physics principles that I that I work with my clients now as a physical therapist the beliefs the mindset both my sister and I feel we aren't worth something could it start in our childhood yeah that's what I'm talking about right now Michelle so basically we learn from age birth to seven years old how to be in the world, how our parents treated us, how we feel significant. It affects how we feel significant for ourselves. So basically a baby is born totally open, totally empowered. Babies are, if you, you know, do you have a baby? Do you have a child? Because when my daughter was born, I mean, I worked as a pediatric physical therapist the first eight years of my career and I got to learn so in depth about infants you know I became an infant massage instructor and babies are total open chakras you know expanded we talk about spirituality and basically all we all are practicing trying to get back to when we were born because when we're born we're pure love we even breathe diaphragmatically purely did you know that when a baby is born and I learned this in physical therapy that they can only use their diaphragm fully to function because of the way that their rib cage is formed. How, how amazing is that that nature created us so that we could only use our diaphragm fully when we're born. So from birth to seven years old, we're in this theta brainwave state mostly, and that's the hypnotic state. And basically all of our programs, we record them of how we are supposed to be in the world. And that's why I, I created a Touch of Love infant massage program years ago because I felt like wow you know so the solution to change the world would be to change how we parent how a pregnant woman carries her baby and then how we spend time with our babies and think about it so many people put their babies in daycare so like for me I didn't work full-time for four and a half years after my daughter was born and I literally over massaged her and she's a big girl she's like she's really healthy I breastfed her for two years it's like I overcompensated for what I didn't get in my childhood on my daughter um, but still this recurring theme of unworthiness so just to go back to that yes um, it all begins in as a child and then I meet meet parents I meet people that have had love in their life and they've had, you know, all the financial support, all the food, you know, all the needs were met and they're still not happy. Like I have clients who are CEOs of companies that are super duper uh, successful and inside they still don't feel worthy. So that's 
part of the reason why I want to make this video right now is because what is it? What do you think it is that we're missing? What do you think the reason why this unworthiness happens? What do you think? You know, comment, comment down below. I'd love to know. I definitely have some perspectives and that's why I'm making this video. And I'd also love to know how, what, what, what do you think it's about? Because what I have realized is the unworthiness comes from a lack of having a deeper relationship with our soul, a deeper relationship with who we really are. That's what I feel the unworthiness comes from. So the way that it has changed in my life has been first and foremost to let go of my beliefs that are that I am unworthy because I made up a story when I was 12 when my dad left after my parents got divorced. I made up a story as a child that the reason why my dad left was because I wasn't lovable enough. I wasn't enough. I wasn't worthy enough. Um, my dad, it turns out, he left because he was in so much pain of the divorce that for him that was his coping mechanism. And I learned this later, years later, just like five years ago, my dad shared with me you know, how sorry he was that, that that's how he handled it. and. Um, and because I'm so intuitive, I could feel him. I could feel how he was struggling to share this with me. So my dad doesn't share emotions and, and talk like I do. You know, he's not, a, he's not like me in that sense. Um, and I misinterpreted his actions of leaving and not staying in touch with me as abandonment. So I feel a lot of us that feel unworthy, we also feel abandoned. We feel like somebody left us. Is that, does that resonate for you? I wonder. Did you ever feel abandoned, insignificant, or unworthy as a child? Well, I definitely did, and then I overcompensated later on as I had to get only A's in physical therapy school. I literally would study nine hours in my kitchen in the table. I remember this, you know, because I had to get an A. I had to get 100%, and I overcompensated by excelling in my, in my school, you know, when I was at FIU. I felt like I would be nothing if I didn't get straight A's, if I didn't graduate, you know, and, and do really well. And I, and I put myself on a, under a lot of pressure because I didn't feel good enough if I got a B or if I got a C. Um, I don't even know what I would have done if I wouldn't have graduated, you know, my life would have been over. Um, and then I overcompensated by trying to love people in the right way and trying to do the right things and trying to be the best version that I could be but it was coming from this place of unworthiness it wasn't coming from a sincere authentic just I wish to be the best I can be place um, so there's a difference between us being ambitious and achieving success from a place of unworthiness hi and from being successful and achieving greatness from a place of being soul guided, being in alignment with your spirit. And that alignment with spirit causes us to want to excel. So I'm just talking about this place of feeling worthy and doing our, our, our career, doing our mothering, you know, being a sister from a place of feeling worthy and doing things from a place of feeling unworthy. There's a different feeling with these. One of them feels more uplifting and light, and then another one feels more manipulative and um, lower vibration. I've done both, so I know what both of them feel like. And I am, I'm very free now. I feel very free now because I, I genuinely don't have to prove anything to people. And mind you, who knows? Maybe that's my ego talking, right? But I feel a lot freer. That That's a sign, I think, that you feel worthy. Freedom. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we have to get burned in our lives to learn. First, we got to get burned. Then we can learn. Um, if we didn't have the best childhood. And you know what? You might have had the best childhood. Your parents might be telling you that you, I, I loved you, you know, I, like my, my poor mom, she's always telling me, Mishi, I feel like you remembered all the negative things from your childhood, but that's because I'm a cancer. I was a little drama mama, you know? And my poor mom, she did the best she could, but I still was so hard on my mom for so many years. 
and that makes me sad you know as I think about it I wasted all those years with my story the story that I had to play out because of the unworthiness and here's my mom today loving me pouring out her love to me and those programs still exist inside me so if I work as a healing guide okay and I am such a like pro self-reflection, pro healing, pro looking. Um, I just want to read this comment Suki sent. Yes, we are so worth it, Suki. You're so right. Yes. And you know what's amazing about the worthiness is whatever we feel, like for me, it's been so hard to really appreciate the gifts of the healing work that I do for people because it's different, you know, as a physical therapist combining energy healing and sound and mindset work, I don't really have a lot of like peers that are doing what I'm doing that have the same degree and the same trainings and you know, I've done a shaman training and the psyche so the value of what I offer, I, I don't really know that value because I don't have another person that has the same type of credentials as I do. And I, yes, <laughs> it's priceless. I mean, I really think that what I offer people is priceless because it's life changing. It's not just helping you to release pain in your physical body, but it's helping you to release pain in your emotional body that we yeah, we empaths remember the hurt, we will remember the joys. Yes, I know. And you know what I realized though? I'm glad that, just jumping back to your comment, Michelle, that as empaths, we do remember the hurts. And maybe we needed to remember all those hurts. Like maybe I needed to really be dramatic about my past so that I can be like a slingshot and propel forward and teach people how we don't have to be victims. I am super empathic, I am super sensitive, and you know what, that makes me an amazing intuitive. And I mean, it blows me away when I just meet people and I feel things, and what I know now is healthy boundaries. That's taught me to have healthy boundaries, and also that I don't have to fix anything. Everything is perfect. There's nobody that I have to fix. There's nobody, I'm not in charge. And that's why I created the Alva Method of self-empowerment so that we can feel fulfilled from the inside out. So getting back to the worthiness, what I have learned, and this is why I made this video right now, is that our belief about what we are is what makes us feel worthy or not. And so I've created this way of looking at myself and everyone else as the eyes through like how God would see us, Jesus, who said he was the son of God. And the more I surround myself with nature, look how beautiful these trees are. Look how gorgeous nature is, right? So I'm breathing oxygen from those palm trees. That's what I'm doing right now. These palm trees, I'm making CO2, here we go. For the palm trees. And what I, what's me spending time with nature has made me feel so worthy it's been so healing to live here across from the beach this past year and a half because I get to feel connected being outside and I get to feel the magic of what I am and what all of us are. And it's so much more than the story that I created when I was 12 of not feeling loved by my dad, of my dad leaving. And I realized that whatever we focus on, we get more of. So I don't have to keep talking about that story, right? And I can be grateful that God put my parents exactly as they were in my childhood so that I could be the person that I am today. And I'm, I'm choosing today to turn all that shit into fertilizer because that's what nature does. It turns all the shit into fertilizer. Nature recycles. And the more I feel my true essence of who I am, the more in alignment I am with forgiveness, with compassion, with learning from life, instead of keep just talking about my story. You know, the story is dead. The story is the past. The story can never change. It's what do I want to create now? How do I want to grow from my past? And what I like to do is say, how do I strengthen, heal, imagine something new, and thrive from my past? because that is turning the shit into fertilizer. 
So remember, SHIT stands for strength and heal. Imagine something new, thrive. And that's how I am strengthening my relationship to myself and feeling worthy. And I love what you brought up, Suki, about how much to charge for your programs because you also are a super duper integrative therapist, healer, goddess. And um, I think all we have to do is be ourselves. And that's kind of why I wanted to come here today and just be myself. And I don't have to put my, make my hair, you know, this is my morning, just woke up Saturday and wanted to go to the beach hair and uh, no makeup on because I'm, I'm enough. It's the message that I'm bringing and the message is not just behind all this makeup. So today, this is it. This is, this is natural me and I think it's enough, <laughs> you know? I think, you know, what I realize is I wear less makeup the more worthy I feel. I'm less fixated on how my hair looks, how is my uh, blush, the more I feel the fulfillment from inside me. And the reason why I feel more fulfilled inside me now today is because I have sat with my shame, I have sat with my unworthiness, I have sat with that little girl inside that was so sad that her daddy left when she was 12. And I'm sitting with her right now and she doesn't need to be anything more than she is. And that same little girl is the one who inspired me to create a different way of healing for us where we can lay on a table and, and sit with our shit and turn that shit into fertilizer. Because no matter how many books we read, how many videos we watch, we have to be intimate with ourself and we have to be intimate with all those parts that don't feel worthy. So when we complain about not feeling worthy, we can start to ask, well, how can I strengthen myself from these feelings of unworthiness? How has unworthiness been a gem in my life? So for me, unworthiness has been a great thing for me at FIU during physical therapy training because I totally overcompensated by studying really hard to do well. And I've also taken a gazillion courses because I felt unworthy of just being a PT. I felt like, nope, I'm not doing enough as a physical therapist. I need to learn how to work with the mind. I got to do mindset, but I don't want to be a psychologist. I want to teach people how to change their beliefs. I want to work with people's souls. How can I do this? So I got, became a yoga teacher, um, studied a lot of different spiritual things. And so my unworthiness of not feeling good enough that I don't have enough to, to give you know, to people has caused me to excel by learning different things and getting outside of the box. And my unworthiness has also made me push love away in the past, beautiful people away. And you know what that taught me? That I sabotaged myself. I would have never learned that I sabotaged myself in the past with men that I'm attracted to if I didn't do that. And yes, it was really suffering, a lot of suffering. I've gone through a lot of crying, a lot of hating on myself, shaming on myself, and being hard on myself. Like, how could I have done that? And you know what? That was pretty freaking painful, but I had to do all that to learn that I don't have to be hard on myself. I don't have to persecute myself. I don't have to shame myself. I did the best I could. If I would have known something better, I would have done it different. I used to be really hard on myself and being hard on myself about being hard on myself, okay? And that made me a harder woman. I was a harder Latina. And I was a harder mom because of that. Being hard on my daughter, being hard on my mom. And unfortunately, I had to do that a lot to then learn that is draining me that's my ego acting out and I don't need to give it any more power I can be more in my heart and it's amazing how it all reflects in the way that I work with people the unworthiness that I have felt helps me also to attract clients that don't feel worthy and to have not just some awesome techniques for them but to actually be a space holder of what that feels like and how we can transform into worthy, amazing, brilliant, 
miraculous, worthy beings. And it all begins within. It begins with feeling yourself more. Feel those parts of you that you don't love. Maybe it's your thighs. Maybe it's your breasts. Maybe it's your belly. Be with those parts. I literally massage my body, okay? I do this in the shower and I tell my body, I love you. I love you thighs, I love you belly. Because my body is my subconscious. My body is my past. And the more we can use the senses, it just makes more of a brain, you know, the brain interprets a deeper message. So when you touch yourself in a loving way, and you say, I love you, you're not just saying it with your mind, you're feeling it with your body. So I invite everybody right now, pick a part of your body that you don't feel is worthy, that maybe like you have sex with no lights on because you don't want your partner to see your body. So that might be something you want to heal is turn the lights on and enjoy your body exactly as it is. Enjoy it with yourself first, this way you feel fulfilled from the inside out, and then share your beautiful body with your partner because we can shift so quickly and that's what this healing work that I do is all about it's healing at the speed of light because we are light that's our nature it's our nature when we let go of that story magic happens and our bodies are always ready for us to love them more our bodies are always there just waiting to be loved by us to be appreciated by us and it's helped me so much to believe that I am a goddess to believe that I was made by God, by Creator. I learned this in belly dance. When I did my belly dance teacher training, my teacher, Kathy, she is the one that made us walk the goddess, goddess walking. So belly dance changed my life. It, it taught me how to feel as I walk that I am a goddess. So how could I be hurting myself anymore if I'm a goddess? So if you wanna feel more worthy, own that you are created by a brilliant, magnificent creator that created these beautiful trees, these beautiful flowers way over there, the poinsettias, and that created you, and that created me, and created everybody on the planet. So just walk around, even if you don't have parents, even if your parents, maybe you're adopted, but you know what, because you're here, you're on purpose. Right now, if you're alive and you're here, you're on purpose. So we don't have to define our worthiness based on our past and how our parents were with, the, with each other or even with us. We can literally start to create whatever we want to create. And if it's worthiness today, today's your day. Today's your day to decide, you know what? I'm gonna let go of that story because Michelle's telling me that it's just a story. It's just a story that you keep telling yourself. And something else that helps me a lot is sometimes I'll lay there when I'm doing my E3 breath and I'll just tell myself, what would it have felt like if my dad never left when I was 12? This helps me a lot, actually. What would it feel like? Thank you, Michelle. What would it feel like if my dad was there for me when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? What if he was there for me when I went on my prom date? What if he was there to meet my prom date? You know, what if my dad was there? And then, and I've done this in my past, and it and it just definitely has helped me to replace those hurt parts. And then as I did that exercise recently, because I've done it a couple times, I started thinking, well, how could I have learned to be really super kind to a man? In my past relationships, I feel like I've taken men for granted. In my personal romantic relationships, I feel like I have taken my partners for granted. So, and I've been really hard on myself about that because I don't think I really appreciated a man loving me in my past. And I see now because I didn't know how. I didn't have that person loving me after I was 12. So like maybe that's part of the reason why I haven't been able to accept that love. And believe me, I've met people that have wanted to love me so much. <laughs> And yet I, I haven't had the ability to receive it in the past. And I cut myself some slack on that because I was really hard on myself about it. I mean, really hard because I just didn't, I didn't have that memory bank, right? So that 
I literally started saying, well, what would it have felt like, you know? What would it have felt like if I could have received all that love? What, could it, what would it have felt like for me to be loved so deeply by a man that's never going to leave me, that would always be by my side? Loretta, look, Loretta jumps on the call right now. Loretta's in a beautiful relationship with a man that is by her side and would never leave her. And she actually is such an inspiration for me. I'm so happy you're here. Um, and I didn't have that repertoire, that memory of what that would feel like. And that's why I pushed it away because it didn't, it didn't click with my subconscious programs, you see. To sustain a long-term healthy relationship with somebody that would stay with me, that wasn't my um, past memory. I couldn't accept it. And this is why I share this because if you're not receiving what you wish to receive consciously, it's because there's something inside you subconsciously that's holding you back. And that's why I created the Alva Method of Empowerment for us to align our subconscious stories, the programs, which is running the show. The programs run our show. And if you want to lose weight, let's just say 30 pounds, 10 pounds, but you do everything and nothing helps you, or you want to rid yourself of back pain, or you want to be in a great relationship, it's your subconscious that's holding you back. Okay? And that's what this work that I do today, it guides us easily and effortlessly at the speed of light to reconnect because we don't have to do years and years and years of therapy. I'm sorry. If you're doing years and years and years of something, it's not working. Okay, what it is working for is to keep medicating us to avoid the deeper healing. Okay, I did this. This is why I'm saying this. I got used to going to therapy. It was comfortable for me to talk about my story. And now with what I know about quantum healing is whatever I focus on, I get more of. So if I keep talking about my story every week in therapy, I'm just perpetuating my story. I'm strengthening that relationship I have to my past. So I really feel in a, in a general consensus that we need to spend more time in imagination mode. What would it feel like if, and whatever that is that you want to create, what would it feel like if I lost those 30 pounds? What would it feel like if I already wrote my book? If I already published my book? What would it feel like if my program was already finished and everybody was charging me top dollar for it? And then breathe in, do the E3 breath, and feel as though it's already true. And those are the things that have helped me to get out of my own little unworthiness rut. Because I definitely feel worthy today. I definitely feel that I'm worth it. And the only person that I ever had to get that approval from was myself. I have given myself permission. I have given it to myself that I am worthy of receiving love fully inside myself and I don't have to be hiding myself from myself anymore. That's the only person that I ever needed to get in touch with is me, my inner child, that little girl inside. And I have nurtured her so much and I have let go of things that were hurting me. I'm stop hurting myself. I don't want to abuse myself by not surrounding myself with people that really appreciate me because I appreciate myself more now so I'm grateful to those people because they're just showing me where I'm at so I hope this video talking about worthiness own it that you're a goddess for the men own it that you're a god and you are a beautiful miraculous creation as precious as this natural setting I'm in here and that it's you, it's up to you to decide whether you want to believe you're worthy or not, whether you want to charge top dollar for what you do, and whether you want to believe in the service of what you give, that it is so valuable. And I'm saying yes to that. I am saying yes to valuing everything that I share, but I can only do that now because I finally see how valuable I am to myself, to myself. So if you're not getting paid what you feel you deserve, it's not anything to blame on anybody else or yourself, actually. Just be aware that it's only because there's still parts of yourself that, that can be more loved and appreciated. So everything is just a reflection. And I, th and I think a lot of us have this unworthiness thing in the past because I think a lot of us struggle with making money. For some reason, money is something 
I mean, it's 0.5, you know, 5% of the population or something that are super wealthy, right? And I definitely have an easier time now sticking to my rates and I don't feel guilty, you know? I noticed that people will manifest the money to work with me for the six session package because I, I value so much now to work with me for at least six sessions. I used to see people just for a chakra clearing, you know, people that want a quick fix. However, I noticed that I'm actually selling them short because for the long-term changes, definitely I think you need to work with me for six or more sessions, at least six, but one session is not going to cut it. So I'm not really doing this anymore unless somebody's from out of town. Um, I highly recommend to people now to work with me for at least six sessions. If you don't want that back pain to ever come back, um, to stick with me for that long. Even though you might release it in one session, it takes time to change those neural connections in the brain that are causing the, that mindset to happen. And before, I was just happy that I had a client that wanted me for one session. But now I value so much the work that, I, that I'm more interested in the long-term outcome for them. Because I'm interested in my own long-term outcome for me. It's amazing how this works, right? So. Let me know how this benefit helped, this video helped you. And if there's anything you want to share about what works for you, how do you make yourself feel more worthy? What has worked for you in your transformation into worthiness? Share with us because I am definitely a risk taker, taking a risk here, making a video after being in the ocean and uh, not wearing any makeup. You know, I'm just in my bathing suit here outside. But you know what? I feel worthy that I have something to share. I feel the worthiness that what I have to say actually heals people. And I've heard this a lot from people that, I, that I've worked with and just friends that they tell me, Michelle, you know, sitting with you and you just being so available and so honest, it heals me. And I started thinking, you know, I used to want to learn all these techniques of healing, all these different techniques of clearing. What if the, what if the healing technique was just being? being yourself what if more of us were being ourselves around this planet and just by being we're healing everybody they don't even have to sign up for a session of anything because we're healing everybody left and right healing at the gas station healing at target and the checkout counter you know like what if more of us were showing up as we are and what i've learned is that i i do less today I teach my clients more what works for me, what works physiologically, what works for humans, because when you use science to get you there, it works. Science works. And that's what I love about what I do because it's unlocked the, 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 the way out to get through the heaviness. Like a lot of us are walking with emotional baggage, a lot of suitcases. And I'm here to tell you that I've discovered ways to let go of those suitcases. Just like these old dried up leaves, nature lets go. See that right there, old dried up leaf? Thank you for being there. And you know what? Pretty soon the wind's gonna take it off and it's just gonna drop. And it's up to us to connect that we are magical, that we are miraculous. And the world is a better place the more we feel worthy because we're here to shine our gifts everybody is significant everybody has something beautiful and special to offer it's not just me because i post a video post your own video share what's share the medicine that you're living right now share your medicine with us share with us i encourage you to do that make a video share yourself share your beautiful self and imagine if each one of us had our own beautiful beingness on our timeline you're impacting people there your friends Ask yourself, you know, how can I be a, a light for others? How can I be a light for myself first and foremost, of course? And you know what? I finally know how to do that myself. I finally know how to uplift myself. It's taken me my whole life. And you know what? I am not gonna take for granted any more of this amazing life. It's been a long journey and I'm not gonna take it for granted. I'm gonna have a kick-ass day now when I end this video I promise you and please go in the mirror right now and look at yourself and say thank you.